Hey kids, welcome to K-Crew. Um, I'm really super missing actually being at church at K-Crew with you guys, being able to see you guys, see your smiling faces, get to hearing your chatter. Uh, I hope that you guys are staying safe, staying healthy. Um, I know that's something I always relate to my students. Um, stay safe, stay healthy. A anytime I see them, whether it's on uh, video conference or, or even through uh, some messaging that I send to them back and forth. So I hope that you're staying safe, staying healthy. Uh, today is National Shrimp Day. Uh, it, is, it is National Shrimp Day. It's, it's the day that we can celebrate all about shrimp. Uh, maybe you're eating shrimp. Wait, no, that's not it. No, today, well, it is National Shrimp Day, but today is Mother's Day, and I hope that you show your mother appreciation. Maybe you could make her a nice shrimp dinner. Uh, make sure that you uh, tell your mother that you love her and that you appreciate all that she does for you. Um, she has now become your teacher, um, and so make sure that you show her extra love and extra care. Uh, so happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers who are watching. Um, so happy Mother's Day to all you you mothers who are watching. I hope that you y'all are okay. Um, thank you so much for uh, uh, for all that you do for your children. So kids, uh, I want want to talk to you today uh, about uh, uh, about the Bible, different things that we've been learning about, different things that we've been talking about. You know, it wasn't long after after creation that sin had entered the world. Now last week. Um, we had talked about some of that, some of the things that had happened. Um, what was the first sin? You know what the first sin was. It, it was the fact that Adam and Eve, they, they disobeyed God. They took the fruit that God told them not to eat and they ate it. Who committed that sin? Well, it was Adam and Eve. You know, things were perfect in the world. There was nothing that was wrong in the world. God had, had made this world and it was an absolutely beautiful, beautiful world. But when sin entered the world, things began to change. What were some of the things that changed? Well, now there was now there was a hard work that had to be done. Adam had to go out to the field and he had to go and, and work in the field and, and really sweat to grow food. Uh, Eve was going to have, have pain in the childbirth. There was now death that had entered the world. Sickness was now in the world. Pain, all sorts of things began to happen. Things, the world began to change because of sin. When we move from Adam and Eve's sin, we move to, to Cain and Abel. And I'm sure you know about the story of Cain and Abel. And, and Cain had killed Abel because of jealousy. And, and the last time uh, that, that you were together, we were together here at K-Crew. Um, you, you heard the story last week. Um, we, we talked about how man's heart was always evil. Man's heart was evil. It's filled with sin. In fact, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know, that verse tells us that, that you and I sin. You and I do wrong things. Sin is anything that we say, anything that we think, anything that we do that displeases God. The verse tells us that, that you and I sin, and, and sin had entered the world through Adam and Eve, and, and we see the story of Cain and Abel and how sin was there, and, and, and sin had now changed the entire world. So far, we've been talking about the seven seas. Uh, we, we've talked about the first two. We've talked about uh, creation, how God created the world. We talked about the second C, corruption, about how sin now entered the world. Today we're going to talk about the third C. The third C is catastrophe. What is a catastrophe? Hmm. What do you think? Think about it. What is a catastrophe? Well, a catastrophe is a big disaster. It's something terrible that happens. Something very bad. Can you think of any catastrophes? Yeah, I see that hand. Yes? Good. Yeah, there's all sorts of catastrophes we can think of. Uh, there, there's tornadoes. I can think of uh, my mother-in-law. She grew up in Indiana. Uh, she lived through a catastrophe. In fact, the town that she had grown up in uh, was destroyed by a tornado. Tornado is an example of a catastrophe. How about a hurricane? 
I think back into 2013, or sorry, 2012 with Hurricane Sandy and, and how that affected us here in Pennsylvania. That was a catastrophe. There's tsunamis, there's floods. In Jonestown, PA, out west, there was a flood that happened. There's earthquakes. If you're living in Sinking Spring, you've been feeling some earthquakes over the last year or two. There's earthquakes. These are all examples of catastrophes. A catastrophe, again, is a disaster. It's something terrible that happens. Something bad. You know, the Bible even talks about catastrophes. In fact, there's one catastrophe that we are going to focus in on today. And that catastrophe was so big, it has never happened since. And I'm sure you know what that catastrophe is. I'm going to start reading from God's Word. I'm going to read from Genesis, and I'm going to start in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. In fact, Genesis 6, 5, it says, The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. We, we see here that God knew the hearts of the people. God knew about how the people were becoming, what their thoughts were, what was in their heart. It tells us about, about how the people only began to think about evil things. That was all they thought about. They thought about the wrong things that they could do. And God does not like sin. In fact, God is perfect. He's, he's holy. And, and that reminds me of Jesus, who is God's son. Jesus is perfect. Jesus is never sinned. God never sins. These people, they had sinned all the time. You and I sinned. We had already talked about that. They, they had sinned. God is perfect and, and, and people are not. Well, what did, uh, what did God think about these people and their sin? Let's, let's read in Genesis chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along. We're going to stay in Genesis chapter 6 today. It says here, and the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heaven, for I am sorry that I have made them. God was very sorry. He was very sad that he had made the whole world. And that, that because of, of, of the sin, it was no longer perfect. And the sin was, um, what was, was there and it had to be punished. And, and so God said in verse 7 here, it says, So the Lord said, I will blot out. He will blot out everything. What does that mean? Sometimes when I'm, when I'm writing and, and uh, I, I make a mistake, I, I take my pen and I, I take my pen and on that paper and I try to scribble it out. I try to blot it out so you can't see it anymore. I try to get rid of that mistake. God said he was going to blot out everything. He was going to get rid of it all. He was going to destroy it. And, and, and he was going to do that because he is holy. God must punish sin, punish the wrong things that we have done, because he is perfect. He is holy. And this means that he cannot sin. And he cannot do wrong things. And he hates sin. Another reason that God must punish sin is because he is just. He, he is just. That means that he is fair according to who he is. He must punish sin. Two characteristics of God. Number one, he's holy, which means he cannot sin. And number two, he's just, which means that he has to act according to who he is. He has to be fair according to who he is. You know, God looked everywhere on earth. He looked everywhere on earth and saw that people were sinners. They were doing wrong. The thoughts in their head, the thoughts in their heart was only evil all the time. 
he's got to punish sin because of who he is. Well, was there, there, was there anybody on the earth who was righteous, who did the right things? Now, now you and I, I, I know for me, I don't do right things all the time. I don't. But I try to do the right things because I, I've put my trust in God. Well, was there somebody at this time who, who, uh, who trusted God, who, who had done right things, who tried to follow God? You know, if God destroyed the whole world, if he destroyed everything, blotted out like he said, there would be nothing left on the earth. There was one man, and I'm sure you know who he was. On the count of three, let's all say his name together. Ready? One, two, three. I, I don't think I heard you. Let, let's, let's try this again. On the count of three, we're going to say what this man's name was who had done right things. Ready? One, two, three. Noah. Good. His name was Noah. He had done right things in God's sight. In fact, the Bible tells us in, in Genesis 6, now we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. It says, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. You see, Noah had done right things. He had done the right things. He had walked with God. He listened to God. He obeyed God. God loved everybody in the world. And God loved Noah. Did you know that God loves you as well? You know, even though we do wrong things, God still loves us. Have you ever wondered why your parents still love you when you do wrong things? You know, sometimes you might, uh, you might disobey them. You might uh, not pick up your room when they tell you to. I know my kids are guilty of doing that a lot of times. But I still love them. Even though you and I do wrong things, God still loves you. God loves you and me so much. And, and God loved Noah as well. Well, sin was in the world and, and the people, they were so wicked. And God was going to punish the sin. He was going to, to punish it. He was going to destroy the world, everything that, that was in it. But Noah, Noah found favor in God's eyes. He found favor in God's eyes because he listened to him and obeyed him. And God talked to Noah. In fact, the Bible tells us what he says. Take a look in your Bibles at Genesis chapter 6, verses 13 and 14. Let's read it together. It says, And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. That doesn't sound very promising, does it? God's going to destroy everything. But he continues and he says, Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. What was God going to do? What was God going to do? He was going to destroy all of the earth. In fact, we know that he was going to destroy the earth with a flood. Why? Because people were evil. The things in the world were evil. And so he was going to destroy them, but Noah had found favor in God's eyes, and so God was going to use Noah to save to save the human race and, and to, to save them from this catastrophe. But first, Noah had a very important job to do. God told him, he said, make yourself an ark of gopher wood. What's an ark? What is an ark? An ark is a really, really huge boat. Uh, my kids, uh, we, we went on a cruise about a year and a half ago, and, and uh, it's a ship. It's a cruise ship, but yet my kids call it a big boat. And I can just imagine this really, really big boat. I can close my eyes and I can think about it, how big this must have been. It was huge. Noah's job was to build this ark. God told Noah how to build this ark, how to build this big boat. Now Noah had a job to do. He had to obey. It's not always easy to obey God. Sometimes we might have to do some things that, that really make us feel uncomfortable. And yet, 
if we love God, if we, we put our trust in him, we will want to, we should want to do what God wants us to do. And so obeying him and doing those hard things. This ark would save Noah. It would save his family. And it would do that because Noah believed in God. Noah was a righteous man. You know, someone else had to obey God too. It wasn't easy for this person to obey God, but it was important that, that this person did obey God. And he had to obey God because what he did was to save people. I'm talking about Jesus when he died on the cross. And he took the punishment for you and for me. The Bible tells us about how Jesus came and he died on the cross and gave his precious blood for you and for me. And he did that so you and I could be forgiven. In fact, the Bible says, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Without the giving of blood, we cannot have forgiveness of our sins. Jesus had to obey God and, and to go and die on the cross so that way you and I could be forgiven of our sins. But Jesus didn't stay dead because three days later he came alive again, never to die again. And he did that so you and I could be forgiven. Noah was a sinner and he was saved by God's grace. And, and the last time we had talked about, we, we had gotten together, we had talked about how, how um, the hearts of men were sinful. And about how they had done wrong things. And I want you to know that, that the Bible tells us that you and I sin. In fact, the Bible tells us, uh, again, in Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. You know, the Bible tells us that you and I sin. Sin is anything that we say, think, or do that makes God sad, that displeases God. But we can have forgiveness of our sins because of who Jesus is. Because of the fact that he came and he died on the cross and he took the punishment for your sins and for my sins. He took that punishment when he died, but he didn't stay dead. He came alive again three days later, never to die again. And we can call on him and ask him to come into our heart and to forgive us of our sins. You know, we, we've talked about some different attributes of God. We've talked about how God is holy. We talked about how God is just. Another attribute of God is the fact that he is merciful. Merciful. God is merciful. He, he cared for Noah. He cares for you and for me. And he wants to show us mercy. He wants to, to save us. He wants to save us from the wrong things that we have done. You know, you may hear about a lot of people who, uh, who don't believe that this book is true. They may not believe the story of, of Noah. They may not be, believe the story of the flood. But if we've put our trust in Christ, then we know that this book is the most important book in the world. And we should want to follow God's word. Noah, he didn't know what was going to happen. He knew that he had to obey God. He knew he, knew he had to build this ark because that's what God wanted him to do. He had to follow God. He had to listen and obey. So I want to challenge you today. Will you listen and obey God. It's not always easy. It's not always easy to do the right thing. But if Jesus is your Savior, then God wants you to listen and to obey his word. Let's, uh, let's close in prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for today. I thank you so much for your word about how we can trust it. Lord, help us to uh, do the right thing and obey your word. Lord, keep us safe as we uh, go through this pandemic and just uh, help us to, to serve you in all we do. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, happy Mother's Day, and I hope you all stay safe and well. Take care.